Hey everybody, Will Fix here. I got another video for you today. XRP's $20 trillion adventure. They're still on track. Did you know that? Yes, and you did. And we're going to talk about that. We're also just going to mention the fact that there's been a new ETF applied for. So let's go ahead and get started. Looking at the one day chart, we're relatively sideways at XRP at 53 cents. Now let's look at quant. Looks like quant has dropped a dollar today. I'm sure we'll see this rebound. Um, I believe we're about to start the bull market soon. Let's go ahead and take a look at crypto trading fund. Now here's a good example of the volatility I was telling you about. Here we were down to, uh, let's go to the seven day. We were all the way down here into what, uh, around 60 cents. Now we're at 97, 99 cents. So that's 40%. How many of you would have liked to have earned 40%? I was able to sell some of mine and made a pretty good penny. So this is one of the reasons why I like this coin is I love to be able to trade in volatility. Just buy when it's low and hold some. It's seen, you know, in just recent times, we've seen uh, right at $2 with this particular coin, and we will see it again. They keep developing this coin. They keep adding other exchanges, and now they got a, uh, I think it's 10 million coins they're going to burn. I don't know if that's happened yet, but um, it's not a bad idea to burn some coins. And if you look at the tokenomics on, tokenomics on this coin, there's only 120 million coins, I believe it is, uh, in existence. So the tokenomics tells me this is really going to move when some attention jumps on this thing. That's why it moves so much. It's moving a lot with a little, which is, which is really cool, isn't it? So some people argue about this coin, you know, this thing or that thing, or they heard this or saw this, or, or it's a scam. Well, just realize everything's a scam according to somebody. Somebody will tell you some coin is a scam, all of them. You know, you can find people to say that. So instead of pointing at it, I trade with it. You can make your own decision, but this is a good example of that volatility I was telling you about. Earning 40% is no joke. So let's move right along. Uh, by the way, I'm going to show you a decent wallet commercial, but look at it. There's a big sale going on. There is a decent wallet sale going on right now. You can use my links in the description. Click the link that's popping up here. You can get the decent wallet from the 8th until the 13th on Sunday. You can get a decent wallet for $89. That's a 44% discount. You want to take advantage of this, I promise you. You're probably going to pick one up anyway. This is the best time for you to get one that I've seen. This is $89 for a decent wallet. You know how it works. You can unlock it with your thumb. Anyway, but you can use just a password. It links with an app that comes comes with the device and you download the app and then when it links to it you get to the large screen of your phone to be able to do all kinds of things there's trading tools in there it's a good time to get one use the link again that's popping up and pick you up one for $89 from the 8th until the 13th another filing for an ETF for XRP this is awesome Canary Capital has officially filed an S1 with at setgov for an XRP ETF. This is from a post from Eleanor Tourette. And it says here, Canary is a new crypto investment firm launched by uh, Valerie Funds founder at Stephen McClurg. We're seeing encouraging signs of more progressive regulatory environment coupled with growing demand from investors for sophisticated access to cryptocurrencies beyond Bitcoin and Ethereum, especially investors seeking access to enterprise-grade blockchain solutions and their native tokens, such as XRP, a spoke spokesperson from Canary tells Fox Business. Now, if that's the conversation of the upper echelon of these uh, types of um, investment firms that 
that uh, filing for an XRP ETF uh, is just part of the conversation of, hey, man, there's a lot of people that are wanting this and they're wanting this special type of custody that we offer where the ETF is the one holding the particular uh, XRP. They are the uh, custodians. And then the investor just gets a piece of it. Cool thing about the ETF, as you guys know from previous videos, I mean, I've, I say it all the time, the ETF requires the company to buy enough XRP to stay solvent. Now, and as you know, XRP can't be at two places at once. So it's either going to be um, the XRP and the ETF cannot be in another location doing cross-border transactions. What's the value of that? Well, it shrinks the pool of available cross-border transaction tokens, doesn't it? Just like the uh, establishing an RLUSD wallet requires 12 XRP. Those can't be two places at once, correct? So all of these bullish factors, these multiple ETFs that are coming on board, it's not the same as a Bitcoin ETF. This is something I was trying to bear out to uh, somebody just the other day who uh, rather would say, well, we have a difference of opinion. I am not expressing an opinion here. This is not an opinion that an ETF for XRP will operate differently than one for Bitcoin. They are two complete different coins. The price of XRP is not going to be driven by retail investors and ETFs. The main price driver is going to be adoption by institutions in using cross-border payments. So the smaller that pool is, the more the coin is going to go up in price everywhere. All of the coins in the ETF are going to go up too. So the smaller we make that pool for institutions to purchase, the greater the price is going to be on a supply and demand aspect. This is a situation that does not exist for Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't have a price driver of being institutions and cross-border transactions in the same way. It doesn't have that factor. It is just a store of value equal to everybody, institutions, individuals, and everybody. The big difference is your, the institutions for XRP, they don't care what the price is. They're not buying it and then holding it and waiting. Okay, that's a lot of the investors that are doing that. Now, granted that there will be banks that are going to purchase it for that same thing. I think all of them will own some. But uh, my, my driving point here that I want to make is, does if a bank is moving $1 million, do they care if one Bitcoin is $1 million? I mean, one XRP is $1 million? Or if it takes a half a million XRP? Well, actually, they would rather a, a XRP coin be worth $1 million because the transaction fee would be less. The higher the price of each XRP, the less the fees will be for the movement of the money. So when institutions are going to move a lot of money, it's irrelevant what the price is. So those will be what we will see as a purchase. They will see as a use. So it will affect all of the coins as if somebody is buying XRP at those, but this bank is loading up, sending it, then it's unloading and another bank's loading up, sending, and all of those use cases will act. It's as if it's purchases, but they're not purchases for holders, okay? But all the holders, all of our coin is going to go up based on all of those use cases. So, it's not the same. So now we got two ETFs being filed for. And if you notice, they don't care about the lawsuit. Now, most of the lawsuits for Ripple, isn't it? E uh, XRP has gotten clarity. So uh, whether it's really now, is the fine going to be this much or that much? I mean, that's basically, it's not, it's not a decision that's being made of, if, is it going to exist or not? 
That's that's not the question. Also, uh, this particular case, which is relevant to the price now on retail, will not be relevant once there is more regulatory clarity. That will bypass all of this because as soon as there's regulatory clarity, <laughs> ETF and, and all of this XRP is going to go so far up in price, it doesn't matter what the fine is. You, you see the point? I mean, people are going to use it and they don't care if Ripple has to pay a fine. They really don't care. It's, it's irrelevant. It's really only about regulatory clarity, in my opinion, right now. What do you think? That's what's important. What do you think is holding XRP back now? I've seen so much bullish information. We're going to take a look at just one other factor that's that's kind of fun. Now, I saw this on Mickle's um, Twitter page. Uh, he's a good person to follow, like his content that he sees. How Ripple is revolutionizing banking against swift failures. So let's just listen to this real quick. Banks don't like SWIFT. Soon they will make the switch to XRP. You, like, you have you know, north of $20 trillion going cross-border each year. It is fraught with you know, error rates and it's slow. It's expensive. It, for me, it's a classic like Silicon Valley going up against the big behemoth Goliath. But it's so broken. I mean, when I go talk to banks, it's a beautiful thing for me because banks don't like SWIFT. They're frustrated with SWIFT. Their customers don't like SWIFT. And like... That's a great place to be uh, when you're selling into that. So look, do I think there's other vertical use cases and maybe if I went back, could we do it differently? Uh, yeah, I, sometimes I, I wonder that, but I also think we have been so fortunate through a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill that we find ourselves with a lot of momentum uh, in, I think, really solving a problem using these technologies at scale. Banks don't like SWIFT. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, Brad is saying when I go to a bank they so dislike swift this is a 20 trillion dollar market that uh, he's basically saying it's such an easy sale you know who knows how much of this market they actually have already ascertained through their non-disclosure applications we know there is approximately 3700 different agreements 3700 now these are with banks and institutions those are the ones we don't know about. I think it was 1,700 of them were revealed during the lawsuit, you know, contracts. And then, uh, as I stated that in another video, somebody said there's 2,000 more. So I, I haven't verified that. So I know there's at least 1,700, but there's possibly 3,700. What You may have a better number and a reference to that. If so, put that in the comments for me. Hey, I thought this was very bullish and fun. A good pump right now after our disappointing, um, you know, time with uh, the lawsuit. But also, have you seen that other people are picking up the lawsuit as well? More than just one. Now there's several coming along, so that are gonna that are gonna sue the SEC. It's becoming a beautiful thing. Hey, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video.